Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. It's October, which means the start of flu season, y'all. And we all know getting the flu can be a serious risk to your health, even if you take precautions like washing your hands and boosting your immune system and even avoiding people. Altogether, we still might end up with the dreaded flu. But today, we've got you covered with the Flu Season Survival Guide, and we're going to welcome Dr. Ken Redcross. How are you? Welcome Thank to the summer. Thanks for having me back. Thank yes. You. Okay, let's get started. So, you say we have to game plan yeah. on day one with the flu. And so, what are some of the early warning signs that you have the flu, and what is that game plan? You know, so it tends to be fevers, chills, and body aches, and also a low-grade temperature or fever as well. So those are some of the things we need to be aware of, especially this time of year. Oof, and, and how many days uh, does it take for the flu symptoms to show up? You know, so this is why it's tricky. It takes about one to four days, so sometimes Ooh. you can feel like that, but within that four-day period, you Ooh. need to be careful. Oof, well, how many days generally does the flu last? Well, thank God, usually between three and seven. Ooh. Ooh, that's so still that's, a long time. It's still a very, 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 very long time. Now, before we go any further, we're going to just end this debate right now. Uh-oh. Flu shot or no flu shot? All right, this is a good question. This year, I will say it's flu shot, guys, all Ooh, right? I know gosh. that could be a little controversial, but remember, last year it was very, very serious. We lost 170 children. Oh, no. So let's make sure. Oh, no. So take us through. Okay day-by-day -day strategies for addressing flu symptoms. So for the first couple days, day one to two, what should we be doing? All right, so the first 48 hours are incredibly important when mm -hmm. we're trying to deal with the flu. The first thing is I brought my little clock here because I want you to hit the snooze button and call in and don't go to work, okay? Oh, no! That's important, and hit it again and make sure you also keep the kids home because you need to start getting ready. The other thing I don't want you to do, mm -hmm. especially if you're 18 and younger, is take aspirin. <gasps> it's associated with a very serious syndrome called Rye syndrome, so we want to be careful there. Oh no. Ooh. But what I do want you to do is I want you to make sure you consider a homeopathic remedy called Oscillococcinum. I like this. I use this, oh, actually. I love it. You and me both. Yeah, and the the sweet. I like the pellets. It's, and so yes. do the kids. Mm. And so it's been shown to decrease the severity and the duration of flu-like symptoms. Okay. And it's also good for kids two years of age and older. And more importantly, you don't get any drowsiness. Oh, yeah. I love them. It's amazing. Okay, so now take us through the next few days, three and four. All right, so days three and four, the important thing is I don't want you to go to your doctor and ask for a prescription. You know why? why? Antibiotics won't help. It only helps with bacteria and the flu is a virus, so mm -hmm. you will not get any benefit there. But I do want you to go and make sure you are tested for the flu. Incredibly important, but I also want you to stay a little closer to the earth like it was when I mentioned Ocillo. Elderberry. Mm. Elderberry is wonderful because it has some activity against the flu and also has been shown to boost our immune system. And how do you use this? Do you drop it into a water bottle or you just take it under your tongue? How do you, you do, do it? either or. I usually yeah. like to put it under my tongue. Mm -hmm. When you get here to Butterbur, Butterbur is all about inflammation. Mm -hmm. Inflammation causes disease and so Butterbur can help us with that. Last but not least, holy basil. So anything that has holy in it, you know that's going to be one. Well, there you go, yes. holy. <laughs> so holy basil in this case is important because it helps with the secretions. It's a natural expector. And once again, guys, think about staying a little more natural. Well, what about Tamiflu? Oh. Um, does it really cut down your sickness time? All right, so the challenge with Tamiflu is you need to get there within that first 48-hour window, mm -hmm. but the challenge with the flu is sometimes you don't know you're dealing with it in that window, and okay. when you get out of it, it's not effective, and you can get some side effects too. So just be careful. So take us through these last couple of All days right. of the flu. All right, so, so, so now we're at the final stretch here, Woo! right? And so the important thing as far as the don'ts is I don't want you lying flat. Because Ooh. lots of times when we get these colds and flus, we have a lot of secretions. And so when you're lying flat, you're coughing all night, you're not getting a good night rest. Mm -hmm. Here, I also have a mug. That's for a hot toddy. Yes. I'm um, from the South. Hot toddies are big. Yes. But I'm just saying <laughs> it can help with initiation to sleep. But the other thing you want to be careful of is that the alcohol can dehydrate you. Yes. So that gets to our dues. All these things here, everyone, are about hydrating yourself. Oh. I love coconut water, it's mm -hmm. loaded with potassium, which you may have lost if you had a little diarrhea or vomiting throughout. You have bone broth here, which and what's is... what's bone broth? So bone broth is like you're making chicken broth or something okay. that you're putting some vegetables and the bones in. A lot of good marrow there. Okay. The other thing is here, popsicles. A Ooh. good way to get a little bit, I know, a nice sweet way to yeah. do it as well. And then we also have electrolyte drinks and also honey. Honey's been around thousands of years. Incredibly important. It's antimicrobial, so bring all these natural things into the fold. Now, is there a special kind of honey we should use? Is it, should we use raw honey? Should it be like the one that, with the teddy bear? Yeah, you, you know, know. So which ones are the best ones like to use? like a cute teddy Bear, right? I actually like the raw honey if you can. Mm -hmm. Also, be careful with young kids and honey. That's okay. important as well. 
Let's talk about your book. Oh, yes. It's called Bond. You talk about the importance of the doctor-patient relationship, yeah. especially during flu season. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, it's so important. It's about the important thing between the doctor and the patient. Trust, respect, empathy, and more importantly, everyone, communication. Mm -hmm. This time of year is incredibly important because you should be able to pick up a phone and call your doc and say, Doc, what's going on? It doesn't happen anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't but I'm bringing anymore. it back. All right. Well, come on, be my doctor, Dr. Alrighty. Red Cross. That works for me, definitely. Well, you know what, Dr. Red Cross, thank you so much for coming down to the circle and telling us all of these helpful tips to get us through season flu. There we go. For more tips like these, check out his book, Bond, in stores now.